Okay, guys, I am here with the one and only Big Mo, the youngest ring announcer in the world. Mo, how are you doing? I'm doing well, Ryan. How are you, man? I'm good, thank you. So I understand you've been to the Jonas DeCare weigh-in today. How was that for you? It was good. It was good. Yeah, no, uh, typically a fight week consists of a press conference, a weigh-in, and then obviously the fight itself. So today was kind of the second day. The fight's obviously tomorrow. So yeah, the weigh-in was good. It was good. I'm enjoying being in Manchester. So just to start with, I want to take you back um, growing up. Uh, what, what was your childhood ambitions? So that's a tough question because I, I, I always enjoyed doing a lot of different stuff. Uh, I was an athlete growing up. I, I was in the band at one point growing up. I had different interests growing up. So I never really always kind of aligned necessarily what I was going to pursue. Um, but if I probably had to say probably being a professional athlete was a goal for me growing up for sure. Okay. Um, so I understand you played, was it Division One football growing up? Yeah, American football. Yep. So um, what sort of steered you away from that into ring announcing? Mm -hmm. So it wasn't even necessarily what steered me away. It's just that, you know, when, when my career was over, it was over. Um, I have made no bones about it. I don't think I was good enough to go to the next level. Um, and I also was a little bit burnt out too. I think, you know, when you play, when you play at such a competitive level there, you run the risk and you run the chance of at the end of it being like, all right, <laughs> that's enough for me. Uh, I knew that my mind and other skills that I have would take me further than my body would. So when it was over, it was over and uh, more than happy with how my career went. So basically how, you know, how it transitioned was at the end of my uh, college football career, I was doing some public speaking work, hosting events, things like that. I was always a pretty good public speaker. And some of my friends said I should look into sports commentary, like play-by-play -play broadcasting, like what you study. But at the time, I was pretty burnt out. Like I said, a football and basketball and those team sports that I grew up playing, but I, but I enjoyed combat sports. So I just picked up the phone and found the local MMA promotion back in Colorado, and they brought me on as a color commentator because I was young and had some energy, but I remember, you know, I was doing a couple of shows and I saw the ring announcer. I was like, I think I can, I think I can do that. I think that that's a little bit, you know, that fits me a little bit better. And so, you know, eventually they, they let me try it and I did well and they kind of gave me that role. And then that role developed and developed and then fast forward jobs and different shows. And now I'm, now I'm here. <laughs> yeah. Living the dream. Um, so is it just boxing you do then, Mo, or is, do you sort of tap into other combat sports as well? No, I, I do it all. Um, you know, obviously now boxing takes up a bigger portion of my plate working with Boxer and Sky. Uh, but I enjoy announcing all combat sports. I've announced pretty much every combat sport there is, whether it be boxing, MMA, kickboxing, bare knuckle, Muay Thai. I've announced Letway. I've announced, you know, obscure sports, things like that. So I've kind of done it all. I, I never like to... I never wanted to paint myself into a corner with anything that I did. So, yeah, I think I think I read it was the first bare knuckle MMA fight you you announced. Yeah. Is that correct? Yes. Yeah. No, I announced the first. So bare knuckle MMA. Then I think got legalized in another state, but the but Wyoming was the first state to legalize it. And so yeah, I did a, I did a bare knuckle MMA fight up in Wyoming, and that was fun. Yeah. So um, you spoke about you know the path you was on to to get to where you are now. Um, what was what was the first fight you actually called if you can if you can think back to that? Good question. Uh, it was actually it was a MMA fight for a regional promotion. Um, actually, no, it technically wasn't an MMA fight. It was a promotion that I worked for had basically built this tournament uh, called the King of Sparta, and the, the promotion's name was Sparta. And uh, basically, it was like three tiers. The first fight, it was like eight competitors. The first four fights were boxing. If you won, you advanced the second round, which was kickboxing. And then the third round, the championship was MMA. And the first fights they let me announce was like kind of the opening, ra opening uh, round of the card. Uh, I announced a couple boxing fights on that. And the first show I ever did start to finish was a boxing show for a boxing promotion in Colorado. So is boxing your, your main interest or is it... You're, you're mainly focused on boxing, but you're interested in it all. I'm focused on boxing, but I'm interested in it all. Um, my announcing style is fairly similar for all of them. Um, obviously, I think boxing, I'm a little bit more static and standing still. That's really the only real difference. Um, but I like it all. Um, I don't really have a, a preference one way or another. 
Okay. Um, is there any ring announcers that you particularly look up to, any you get inspiration from? Yeah, I would. I mean, you know, I, I, I respect a lot of announcers that are in the industry. I think they all kind of have their unique style, but uh, I would say for sure I look up to the Buffer Brothers, Bruce, who does UFC, and then his brother, Michael, who's done, you know, he was Let's Get Ready to Rumble and did a lot of big boxing fights. I would say those two are kind of the gold standard when it comes to the sport. And uh, those are the two that I look up to. You know, I, I, I want to be the best at what I do. Therefore, I kind of look to who I, who I view as the best, and then I build from there. Yeah, I mean, those two are iconic, to say the least. Um, so, you, so you mentioned Colorado. Are you Colorado born and bred? or? Yeah, no, I was born in San Diego, California, but I pretty much lived my entire life in, in Denver, Colorado. And I... So what is the fighting scene in combat sports like in Denver? like growing up and now yeah it's a a huge place for training i would say in terms of training might be the best state in the country uh for mma and even for boxing too uh because a lot of people like to train at altitude and olympic training center down in colorado springs so that gets a lot of high quality strength and conditioning coaches that a lot of people want to work with um in terms of hosting fights that's the trade-off is that because it's such high altitude, a lot of athletes want to train there, but they don't want to actually fight there. So really, it's not that big of a place when it comes to actually hosting fights, uh, but training most certainly. Yeah. yeah, I mean, we see it in basketball as well, because I'm, I'm a huge NBA fan, Denver Nuggets fan, uh, actually. So um... I'm, a La- I'm a Lakers fan, even though I live in Denver. Okay. <laughs> but um, yeah, I'm a huge Nuggets fan, so I know about you know the altitude in Denver and in Utah and how a lot of teams do struggle because of that. So yeah, interesting you say that. Um, just to talk about now the deal with Boxer, how did that come around? So you, your debut ring announcing in the UK was the Chris Billam Smith fight with Chamberlain, right? Yeah. Yeah, because that's where I first... Good, re- uh, good research. <laughs> uh, that, that, that's where I first seen you because I was watching the fight and then we even said, we was watching it together and well, me and my, um, me and my girlfriend's family and we, we really liked you as a ring announcer. I think I messaged you on Instagram and then from there I've watched you, you know, with the next few fights in the UK. So um, so how did the deal with Boxer come around? Yeah, well, one, I appreciate you and your girlfriend's family for the kind words. I <laughs> but, uh, basically, so I uh, I announced back in March the Eddie Hall versus Hafthor Bjornsson fight in Dubai, that kind of big titan, you know, massive fight that they And uh, at that point, one of the... Uh, kind of one of the executives for Boxer sent me just a very brief kind of vague message almost. And I tried to get him on the phone and then nothing really transpired for a couple months. And then they ended up kind of hitting me back up to, to come out to Bournemouth as kind of a test run. So I came out and, and it was, it was very much like a a feeling out process. They didn't know what they were going to like me. They didn't know if I was going to be a fit. Um, I actually did it for free. So I did the show and it obviously went well and people seemed to like me. And uh, that job then turned into uh, the Liverpool show, which is which was the Liam Smith fight, and then at that point they kind of felt comfortable giving me uh, giving me a long term deal, and uh, so I signed kind of a uh, just a longer term deal with them uh, to kind of make myself exclusive on the boxing side with them. So, but I enjoy it. I really like it. I like working with them and the Sky team, and it's a it's a really really high quality production, a great platform. Couldn't be happier. Yeah. So, so you say that you um, did it for free. Did that include your flights to the UK, the hotel and everything? So was it a cash loss in that sense? You know, basically I, I said, look, it's, I, I want to prove my worth. I, you, we've never worked together. We don't know if it's going to go well, but I believe in my abilities. So I, I did it for free in terms of a, in terms of a fee standpoint. So I guess alongside Ring and in the UK, I'm sure you've explored a few cities. Um, what cities have you been to? And is there anywhere that you'd like to go? We'd like you here in Cardiff. So Yeah, so I would actually like to go to Cardiff. I've heard it's a pretty cool place. But so far, I've been to Bournemouth. I've been to Liverpool. I've been to London and now currently in Manchester. Really like them all. Um, Bournemouth, I think... I think it was kind of unfair that I went to Bournemouth in the summer. Like I was, I felt like I was in San Diego. I was like, this, this is in England. And now, now I understand it's a little bit colder than that. Uh, yeah. So Bournemouth was cool. Um, Liverpool was great. London, I, I would say probably London's my favorite so far. Um, yeah. Manchester, I'm, I'm enjoying so far too. It's, it's, it's tough to say one way or another. Yeah. And so other than Cardiff, is there any other cities you'd be interested in, in visiting? uh yeah i mean i within the uk i would love to uh i want to check out uh, uh scotland uh, i think that would be kind of a fun time 
I've heard, uh, I'm trying to think there was another one that I wanted to, that I wanted to see. I wanted, I would love to check out Northern Ireland. I've been to Ireland itself. So I, I just visited once when I was younger. So I'd love to check out Northern Ireland, like Belfast area, things like that. Um, but yeah, I mean, I'm really just open to anything. Obvious, obviously, wherever the promotion goes, I go. Thing is, I like to, whenever I go to a new city, I kind of just like to just explore on my own and just kind of see what's out there. And I feel like that's the best way to learn, learn the city. So I just enjoy traveling and I enjoy checking it out and it's all good. Yeah. Um, so something I wanted to ask you is how do you, did you have to train your voice or is it all natural? <clears throat> good question. Um, it's actually all natural. Never, never done any training. Uh, but what I can say for sure is the good thing about, the route that my career took, which was kind of hustling on the smaller scenes and doing small shows and doing them frequently and that type of stuff is I got a lot of reps. Uh, and that's really kind of where I eventually discovered my voice. Like when I go back and watch my initial stuff, I, I hate it because I just didn't really know how to use my voice. I knew how to project well. I call it throwing my voice in the sense of like when a lot of people want to get loud, they shout, but you actually more so want to project your voice. And I I'm pretty, I'm pretty good at that, uh, honestly. And so that that's helped me a lot, but the tone, I just had to practice and I kind of just had to listen to myself over and over again and had to figure out what sounds best. Um, but I kind of just figured it out on my own. Out of the fights you've done so far, so including the ones with boxer, including the ones that you've done in your running to get in that deal, what is your favorite fight? Well, when I set out, my goal was I wanted to announce on the biggest platforms possible. I like big shows. I think that's the most fun. So, yeah, I can say for sure my favorite fight was Shields Marshall uh, that I got to do you know, last month at the O2, and that was an amazing experience. So I, I would say that that's probably uh, – no, that is for sure the favorite fight that I've done. And if I do one bigger the – ne the next big fight will be my favorite after that and after that and so on and so on. So, you know, I, I, I never like to dwell too, too much on what I've done. I'm always kind of looking to the next level. But Clarissa Shields and Savannah Marshall was an amazing experience. And I suppose it's good to look at it as a trajectory. The next fight's going to be bigger and bigger and bigger. And exactly. That's a great way to look at it. Goal. I mean, if, if I can, you know, if I can do a good job and, and play my role for a promotion, then theoretically I can play my role in growing a promotion. So as long as I keep doing that and keep doing a good job, then I'm playing my part. Absolutely. And now, Mo, just to close with, what are your yeah. goals moving forward? Have you got any anything set that you just think, I definitely want to do that? Is there... Is there anything that springs to mind? Um, in terms of announcing, I mean, it's, it's really just about developing my career. I've said from the onset that I want to be the best at what I do. And, and when I say the best, I don't necessarily mean the best announcing because that's going to be subjective from person to person. People are going to have different styles that they like. Uh, but for me, the best, quote unquote, is being on the biggest platform possible, doing the biggest fights possible. You know, so now that I've done, you know, 20, 18,000 people at the O2, I want to do 20, I want to do 25, I want to do 30, 40, you know, that type of thing. There's those kind of goals. Um, but in terms of career goals, I mean, uh, you know, my, my career goal is I, I would love to see what other areas of entertainment this ring announcing can kind of transition into. Um, you know, whether that be acting, whether that be hosting shows, things like that. You never really know where it's going to take you. This has kind of just been a a roller coaster that I've been figuring out on the fly. But, you know, as long as I keep working hard, who knows what I can do. Mo, well, you're an absolute legend. Thank you for your time. Thank you. No, Ryan, I appreciate it. This is a great interview. And I uh, appreciate you doing your research, too. Thank you for that.